In our chapter on risk and return, we're going to have quite a few different videos walking through various problems. This is the first video and we're going to use this to introduce the idea of expected return and standard deviation. In order to do that, we have to first start out with the idea of a probability distribution. A probability distribution is a statistical or financial tool that we can use to try to forecast some of the possible outcomes that might happen when we invest in a particular security, whether it's a stock or a bond. Now, in my examples, I'll typically use stocks, but we can do this for any financial security. The idea of a probability distribution is we know that there are a number of possible outcomes that could happen over the given time frame, which is typically one year. We don't know what's going to happen. Nobody can foresee the future with 100% accuracy. So in try, instead of trying to say this stock is going to give us a 10% return or a 20% return, instead what we do is we say there are a number of possible outcomes and we want to weigh all these possible outcomes, think of how likely they are and what rate of return we're going to get under each of those different scenarios and figure out what are we likely to get on average? How much risk is involved based on our forecasted scenarios? And what is the average rate of return we should get on those forecasted scenarios? So here's an example of a probability distribution for a particular stock. Now the first thing I did was pick four different possible outcomes. And these tie into the overall economy. There could be a severe recession, a mild recession, mild growth, strong growth. Now we know there are more than four possible outcomes when we buy a stock, but at some point we can't put all the possible outcomes out there because there are a near infinite number of possible outcomes that could happen. So the idea of a probability distribution is just to kind of get an idea or a quick generalization of what might happen. And oftentimes you'll see people use from three to eight possible scenarios in their probability distribution. We're using four here based on the economy. And so these are our four possible outcomes as far as economic scenarios. Next, we wanna assign a probability to each of those scenarios. How likely is it to happen? And again, this is kind of educated guesswork because nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. So instead, we're just trying to forecast how likely we think certain things are. For example, in my scenario, I think there's a 10% chance or 0.1 probability of having a severe recession. I think there's a 20% chance or 0.2 probability of having a mild recession. The most likely scenario in my model is mild growth and I assign that a 40% chance or 0.4 probability. And then strong growth is assigned a 30% probability or 0.3 probability. Now notice my probabilities have to add up to 1. 0.1 plus 0.2 gives me 0.3. Add in another 0.4, I'm up to 0.7, 0.3 more gives me one. So probabilities always have to add up to one to cover all the scenarios out there. And then we want to think of what's going to happen to the stock under each of those scenarios. So I think if we have a severe recession, this stock is going to lose 50% of its value. I'm going to have a negative 50% rate of return. If we have a mild recession, I think my stock is going to lose 20% of its value. If we have mild growth, I think the stock is going to generate a 10% rate of return. And if we have strong growth, I think the stock is going to generate a 60% rate of return. Now, again, I want to go back to the idea of the probability distribution as a whole. Now that we've kind of talked about what it is, what each of the components means, probability distributions are not meant to be exact. Instead, they're kind of a ballpark estimation we don't know exact probabilities. We don't know exact outcomes. Maybe in a severe recession, the stock is gonna actually lose 70% of its value. Maybe it's only gonna lose 30% of its value. I don't know any of that ahead of time, so I'm just trying to forecast what might happen, what are some of the possibilities out there. So my probability distribution is not precise. It's not known with certainty. Instead, it's just an educated guess 
trying to give me some framework to work with. Another thing on these probability distributions is they're somewhat subjective. My probability distribution for this stock may look entirely different than somebody else's. Somebody else may have different forecasts of what the economy is going to do. They may think that the stock is going to respond differently. There's not a right or wrong answer in developing probability distributions, but the better your guesses match up with reality over time, the more accurate you're going to be in making good investments. So probability distributions, we can't look these numbers up. In class, the probability distributions are going to be provided for you. But in practice, one of the goals is to try to come up with a good way of forecasting. What are some of the things that might happen? What are some scenarios? How likely are those scenarios to occur? And what is the stock going to do if those scenarios happen? Again, the probability distribution gives us a framework for analyzing the stock. Don't think of it as something that's precise, exact situations, but just a tool to, that we can use to kind of take a lot of information and narrow it down into an expected return, what average rate of return will we expect, and to measure how risky the stock is, how good or bad might our overall outcome be. Next, we'll use the probability distribution to calculate some expected returns and standard deviations.